Have you ever wondered how collisions are detected in a shooter game? Let's say you are in a first person shooter and when you shoot at an enemy, how does the game compute if your enemy is hit in a very short time? To put this into context, a game can have large number of objects in a scene. When you shoot something at every frame, it has to check if the bullet had hit something. How does it do this without checking against every object in the scene, which could be thousands? This is where space partitioning can help. Let's draw a picture. So here's a simplified 2D picture of the scene in a game. Imagine that this rectangle represents the scene. Now let's put some objects into it. Here's my gun and here's the bullet shooting out of it. Now when the bullet moves at every frame, we have to check if any of these objects were hit. So let's partition the space into two. If we know that the bullet is here in the first half of the screen, there's no way it can hit something on the second half of the screen. So we don't have to check the objects in the second half. If we do that, we will definitely save a lot of time. Now why stop there? Let's again divide each of these partitions into two. So now we have four partitions. And you see that if we know that the bullet is in the square C12, we should only check the objects that are in C12. Each time when we subdivide, we are avoiding a number of computations. As you might have guessed by now, this looks self-similar. Let's draw it in a different way. Imagine this circle or node represent the entire space. And as we did before, we subdivide it into two partitions. So we can draw them as children of the first node. And when we subdivide again, we do that on each of these two partitions. Now we know what region is covered by each of these partitions. And when we compute the position of each object, we can assign them to a partition. So the data structure we could use for this space partitioning is intuitively a tree. Each node represents a region in space. We can easily set this region with a rectangle. And also, a node should contain a list of pointers to the objects in this region. So, how do we use this tree now? If we want to test if the bullet is in a region, we start with the root node. If the bullet is in the whole scene, we know that it is still a valid bullet because the bullet can move out of the scene. In that case, we don't have to do anything. So we check its children. At this point, it should be only one of the children that would have the bullet because an object can't be in two places at the same time. So we select the node that has this bullet and check its children for the node that has this bullet. So as you see, we are recursively searching in deeper and deeper levels. This is depth first search. In a leaf node, we find a smaller number of objects, if there are, that belong to this partition along with the bullet. It's also possible that this node doesn't have any objects attached to it because that partition is empty. Then we take each of these objects in turn and do a collision test. Now as you see, the number of collision detections we have to perform is drastically smaller with this algorithm compared to a naive case where we test each object in the whole scene. So this is how space partitioning can help to optimize collision detections. Now let's take a look at a different case. You've seen this app I've been working on recently, and here the mind map is drawn as a tree of nodes. But we want to make sure that when we draw the nodes, they won't overlap. We do that by dividing the space into each subtree a node can have. Let's take a look at the code. Here we are in the measure function. This is where it measures how much space a subtree requires. It recurs into its children, and calls measure on each of them until there are no more children. At this point, it returns the size of its own. Then these sizes are aggregated for each child. So for every node, we have now computed its subtree size. When we unwind back to the root node, we know how much space is required to draw the full tree. 
and where the root node should be drawn. In the drawing operation, we look at the visual size and draw the node in the vertical middle. And we do the same for each of the children. So that's how we can keep adding nodes in any order and still have them not overlap with other nodes. We can also use this for heat testing of the mouse or the taps. It's just a matter of recording the visual size as a rectangle in global coordinates and check if a point is inside that rectangle. That way we can quickly find if we have tapped on a node without having to test every node. So there you have it. Those are two cases where space partitioning can help. Flutter does this when it has to figure out how to draw widgets on screen. Same thing happens when a web page is rendered. Space partitioning is widely used in many modern applications, even without you knowing. So that's it for this video. Like always, if you like what I create, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Until next time.